September 14th. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Romans 8, 16. As to the great truth thus witnessed by the Spirit, we are not to suppose that the testimony is intended to make the fact itself more sure, but simply to confirm our own minds to the comfortable assurance of it. Our actual adoption cannot be more certain than it is. It is secured to us by the predestinating love of God and by the everlasting covenant of grace. It is confirmed by our union with the Lord Jesus and is sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will, it is not for the benefit of our fellow creatures, still less for the satisfaction of God himself, but for the insurance and comfort of our hearts, that the Spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. The testimony is for the confirmation of our own faith and the consolation of our own hearts. But the question arises, what is the mode of his testimony? In attempting to supply an answer, we must acknowledge that we have no certain data to guide us. Sufficient light, however, beams from his work in general to assist us in forming an intelligent and correct idea of his operations. How, then, may we suppose the Spirit witnesses with our spirit? Not by visions and voices, not by heats and fancies, nor by any direct inspiration or new revelation of truth. Far different from this is the mode of his testimony. We may gather from the measure of light vouchsafed, that he first implants within the soul the germ of spiritual life, which beneath his culture produces the fruits of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. From these we are left to draw the rational deduction of our adoption. If, for example, a child of God with all lowliness of spirit, and after much prayerful inquiry, discover that more or less some of these effects of the Spirit's operation are developed in his experience, then it is no presumption in that individual honestly and humbly to conclude that he is a child of God. This is the Spirit's witness. He cannot gainsay it without willful blindness, nor reject it without positive sin. The breathing of the renewed heart after holiness supplies another illustration of the mode of the Spirit's testimony. The panting after divine conformity is the Spirit's inspiration. Where, therefore, it exists, the deduction of that the individual is a child of God. Thus, by begetting in us the divine nature, by producing in us spiritual fruits, and by breathing in our souls a desire for holiness, the Spirit conducts us to the rational conclusion that we are born of God. By shedding abroad God's love in the soul, by sprinkling the conscience with the atoning blood, by enduring the Savior to our hearts, by leading us more simply to rest in his finished work, yes, to rest in himself, by creating an increasing love to the members of the one family and fellowship with whatever is holy, heavenly, and useful. He thus testifies to our divine relationship.